I don't know, you know, it's heavyweight boxing and, you know, it's, it's different to any other, any other weight or any other sport. It's a unique division because you can be a mile ahead on points or smashing somebody to pieces and then bang, you get knocked spark out one in. You can be a mile ahead on points or smashing somebody to pieces and then bang, you get knocked spark out one in. You can be a mile ahead on points or smashing somebody to pieces and then bang, you get knocked spark out one in. So, you know, I'm not, I never underestimate anybody. I've been in this game too long to underestimate people. What's good, family? So, mash the like button and subscribe. So, we just heard Dear Tyson Fury. Tyson, oh, scary. Tyson Scary giving you, man, an insight into what it's like to be chinless. Now, I'm sure there's some Fury super fan girls out there. Why be? What do you mean? Uh, well, listen, I'm just analysing what Fury said. I'm just analysing what Tyson Scary said. Yeah? Because what we do know is, this is... Oh, why be this has got nothing to do with being chinless? What are you talking about? Listen, only certain fighters can, only certain fighters have experienced this. Do you understand? Fury says, you know, one, I can be winning a fight, I can be up on points, winning every round, 12 rounds up, and whoop, bang, one shot, it's all over. Yeah? That there is a very particular experience. Fury comes from a long lineage of men who have a have a great have a great wealth of knowledge and lived experience of what he's describing here <laughs> am i or am i not right i mean his dad yeah his father his once removed genetic line knows exactly what he's talking about here does he not and that's how fury knows so much obviously fury's experienced it in his own career Steve Cunningham, a man who wasn't a big puncher at cruiserweight, comes up, comes up to heavyweight. What bang? Fury was winning on points. What bang? Next thing you know, Fury's uh, murmuring on the floor. His his eyes are rolling in his head like a slot machine, etc., etc. Better yet, the Wilder fight, this first Wilder fight. Fury's up on points. Many people, not me, but many people, had him up twelve rounds and boxing lesson. Uh, twelve round uh, murmuring, yeah. Eyes rolled in his head, Vegas slot machine style. Now, fair enough to Fury, he's managed to pull it off, but that's the point here. Fury's giving you man an insight into what it's like to be chinless. Because just because Fury's so far survived, but by the way, he's been fighting subpar opposition, because Wilder, historically speaking, is barely a top 50 punching heavyweight. Sorry to break it to you. There's a reason Fury and Wilder don't want to go nowhere near AJ. Bottom line. There's a reason for that. Because AJ is a throwback puncher. That's why these dudes are all being funny, fighting each other seven times. They don't want the real Don. They don't want the real GOAT at the moment. They don't want it. Yeah? And like I said, you can hear Fury. There's a reason we don't hear AJ say, Oh, you know, it's a heavyweight division and... You can be, I can be up 12, I can be up 12 rounds and whoop, bang, I end up, because that's not the case. AJ's dad hasn't been iced by a whole bag of nobody's ons, yeah? Black skeleton looking ass didn't ice AJ's dad falling back, squared up with a jab. That hasn't happened. There's no footage seeing AJ's dad get knocked so bark out with his abdominals clenching, nutting all, all over himself from the black skeleton Falling backwards, squared up, with a little, not even a jab, it was more of a, I don't know what it was, a range finder. It was a range, it was an unbalanced range finder, which put dr Big John, Big oh, Fury, all the way out. Halfway to meeting his maker, he was. Yeah, no doubt. 100%. And that was just one of the occasions, against the Black Skeleton looking ass. There was another occasion, I forgot the guy's name, but another one. Put John Fury, oh. Put John Fury, oh, spark out, spark out, is how he went. Yeah? So again, I actually, you know me, I'm a bit of a, I like the technical side of boxing. And I think this is quite an interesting insight from Tyson Fury here. We hear a lot of the bravado and other stuff, we've heard all of that. I think it's quite interesting to learn from the best. Because what we do know is, the Fury line, the Fury lineage of chins, this is a scientific marvel in my opinion. 
to see such a wafer, we've never seen such a wafer, wafer thin chin in the sport of boxing. Because normally, I give I have to give Fury credit to his skills because normally chins like this are filtered out in the amateur stage because they say, you know what, it's just not going to work. And that's to be fair, what happened to John Fury? John Fury was filtered out, wasn't he? Because his career ended. Spark, oh, spark out. That's how his career ended. That's my, that's my point here. We do have to praise Tyson Fury's skill level because his own pops got filtered out. Because chins, are, when you've got a nano way, when when Elon Musk is begging to get a piece of your DNA to study how how they get your chin so thin, it's not gonna, isn't it's not really gonna work out for you at the top level, especially not back in them days when you had real fighters, Holyfield, Tyson, Lennox. It's not gonna work these days when it's a lot easier to be scary. It's a lot easy, easier to duck. That's why Fury has been so successful, Tyson Fury, because we all saw what happened. We all saw Tyson Fury has the same chin as his pops, yeah, and we all saw what happened there. Back in the nineties, people weren't playing. They weren't playing for key. They, you know, what I mean? they weren't playing for fun. These days, people just turn up, don't they, for a check? Back in the nineties, we all saw what happened. Black Skeleton, who wasn't the top tier. The top tier sent John Fury. All the way to meeting his maker. Not playing no games. Even if he was falling back. Even if he was squared up. Even if it was a rangefinder. John Fury was on a one way ticket. Yeah. He didn't have no choice. He was a passenger. His Judas chin did him wrong. No doubt. There's no doubt about that. The Furies have been done wrong in the chin genetics. And that's why. Again. That's why I kind of respect Fury. For taking some time out of his day. To explain to us what it's really like to be chinless. Because only... I, I can't explain this. I wouldn't know what it's like to be up 12 rounds. Winning every round. And then bang. It's all over. Not many... And not being funny. Not, not many other boxers at the top level can explain that either. Because it's just not the case. You know, and that's why we never see an AJ interview saying... Oh, you know, you just never know in this sport. I can be up 12 rounds and whoop, bang. Because guess what? We all saw what happened there. AJ in there with Vlad. Up 4 rounds. Whoop, bang. He's smiling. He gets straight back up. <laughs> yeah? So it's not a big... For Fury, it's a big mystery. Oh, is he going to get up? Is he going to undertake her? Are his eyes going to uncoil themselves and come back too? We just don't know. AJ, when he's smiling, sitting there, it's not really a big mystery, is it? It's not... It's that, that, and that's why it's not exciting. Fury gets credit for things that AJ does all day, every day, no problem. Do you understand? It's because of Fury's vulnerability that he gets credit for it. Just because AJ's chin so stellar, he can be cracked square on by Vlad and sit there smiling and get straight back up. But because Fury is laying spark out, murmuring and eyes in his head, and all, you know what I'm saying? Looks looks like he's literally meeting his maker. You've got Paris Fury sitting there holding her mouth, gobsmacked and worried and scared. He gets credit for that, if that makes sense. And to be honest, we do have to give Fury credit for that because AJ's been given gifts Fury doesn't have. So in, in a way, yeah, that's fair. That's a fair point, to be fair. AJ isn't really earning the things he's got. Just because he's got a cast iron chin, that doesn't really mean... That's, he just won the genetic lottery as such. Fury, the fact that Fury's pushing through, the fact that we know Fury's chin's completely flawed, as we've seen by John Fury, we know that it doesn't take not even a little bit. To, and even, listen, listen to Tyson Fury himself. Tyson Fury says... I can be up 12 rounds, dominating, and whoop bang. That's it. Not going to take much. As we, I mean, isn't, and again, this isn't hyper, hyperbole. This is not hyperbole, yeah? It's not some bit, oh, he's over-exaggerating here, no. He's describing exactly what we've all watched. We've all, what we've all watched. John Fury in there, exchanging with the Black Skeletor. And he puts the rangefinder out there. The rangefinder scuffs. John Fury's chin, and next thing you know, he's just collapsing into a big heap on the floor. Yeah? We've all seen that. We've all seen John Fury in the, in the ring with some next Don, some next light skin Don, exchanging. John Fury gets chipped, and his he lights just turn out, and he just collapses into a heap on the floor. Into his own, he collapses into his own footprint, literally straight down vertical, looking like Tower 7, no doubt. Went straight down. His lights were just, were just off. The switch just got flicked. So, when you've got that kind of chin, it's, it's intriguing for the fans. Yeah? 
that's where the Undertaker, the, the, without John Fury, without Tyson Fury's vulnerable chin, we wouldn't have the Undertaker memes and whatnot, would we? So we have to be thankful for that. And again, I do have to praise Tyson Fury. Number one, for let, for letting us into, like, for giving us an insight into what it's like to be chinless, because we wouldn't know otherwise, would we? We wouldn't know that you could be up 12 rounds and winning every round and dominating and whoop bang, would you? Because whoop bang is a special thing. Whoop bang. What he means to say is, what, what, what range finder? Yeah, not really bang, because bang makes out, oh, you know, Mike Tyson. No, it wasn't what bang, was it? When, when cruiserweight Steve Cunningham, who wasn't a big puncher, hit you, it wasn't what bang, it was what cruiserweight, yeah? It was what wasn't, it was what wasn't a big puncher at cruiserweight. How about that? It wasn't what bang, what bang is Mike Tyson? What bang is AJ? What bang is Lennox Lewis? What bang isn't 200 pounds soaking wet Cruiser weight who couldn't punch Cunningham. Yeah, that's more of what rangefinder. No doubt. What rangefinder had you flat on your back? Deontay Wilder, another one. Another cruiser weight. Another dude who pays people to jump on the floor. Let's not forget that. Yeah, Deontay Wilder built his career. There's no doubt about that. Deontay Wilder built his career paying people to dive on the floor. Romain Stevern, Luis Ortiz, Malik Scott. All of these. Alleged highlight reel KOs were paid shildons. Paid to dive on the floor and make it look good. It's a fact. I've put the videos up myself, you can see it. The shots don't hit. And, and the people dive on the floor. They can't wait to get on the floor. Yeah? They can't wait to make a spec to, they can't wait to make it spectacular. They can't wait to put a performance on. I'm hearing that Lewis Ortiz and Mallet Scott are looking to do... What's that place in London? Is it, is it, listen, there's some famous theatre in London. That's where they're auditioning for, 100%. I've heard Lewis Ortiz and Mallet Scott, after their boxing career, they're going to be auditioning at that famous... Uh, what was it? Some, some, hall in, some hall in London, yeah? Some next theatre hall. That's where they're auditioning for. Because they, trust me, they'd they, they be, they be, they be putting on the most theatrical... theatrical yeah, they be putting on the most theatrical performances, no doubt. The most in-depth and the way they capture the audience is just amazing. And that's why the famous London theatre has hired Lewis Ortiz, Bermain Stevern and Malik Scott to come down and, you know what I'm saying, and put these performances on. But it's no joke. Deontay Wilder's a cruiserweight. Let's not forget that. He's a cruiserweight who can't punch. I'm telling you, man, now, right now. Wilder is not a big puncher. I know some of you Shildons and some of you MTK Ultradons don't understand what really boxing is about and don't understand that you've been conned. Wilder is a marketing job and a failed one at that because <laughs> he don't he don't do he don't do no numbers. But then again, considering he's only fought bums, considering he ain't no good, really <laughs> he ain't no bad, has he? Really, for him to, for a man who's paid people to jump on the floor. Hitting them bad. I have to give him credit for that. So all these years we've been laughing at Wilder's numbers yeah, Really, the joke's been on us. Because <laughs> he's been doing whatever numbers he's been doing. I mean, selling 300k buys. Making quick 20, 30 million. Not for him, but gross. Ain't bad, is it? When you And it's all fake. But anyway, listen. The point is... The point is... Wilder isn't a whoop bang. Wilder is probably top 50 puncher in history. When you go by the stats. Because guess what? Fury, we know, has a wafer chin, and what, what couldn't Wilder do? Wilder couldn't stop him, which says it all, doesn't it? Listen, we saw the black skeleton. We saw the black skeleton looking ass. We saw what he did to John Fury. Yeah? Guess what? Oh, but why be? You know, Tyson Fury, the count was too long. Ask John Fury how long the count was. He, <laughs> he didn't care about no count. And that's the point here. If well, if Wilder was the puncher he thought he was, the count wouldn't be relevant. Because guess what? John Fury, the count never bothered him. Because he was, Spark! Oh! Spark! Out! Yeah? The minute you're complaining about the count, you know there's something wrong here. You know you haven't done your job properly. And Wilder hadn't, because he hasn't got the power. The Black Skeleton has more power falling back than Wilder does fully leveraged leaping forward. Now, this shows you how overrated Wilder, Wilder's right hand is. And Wilder's power is. He's not powerful. The Black Skeleton falling back has more power than Wilder fully leveraged. That's a fact. 
And that's why I tell you he's barely top 50. I'm not even sure that he's top 50, to be fair. Globally speaking, Wilder is not top... I mean, his, historically speaking, Wilder would be lucky to break in to, to top, into the top 50 for power. He's not powerful at all. That's why he went 12 rounds above Mainz to Vern in the first fight. That's why he can't stop Fury for love no money. That's why Ortiz was bullying him until he was told to take a dive by Al Heyman. Yeah? So listen, Fury, we all appreciate your insight into what it's like to be chinless. We all appreciate, because these little things here, oh, you know, I can be winning 12 rounds and whoop bang. I can be winning 12 rounds and whoop cruiserweight who can't punch. Yeah? Because that whoop cruiserweight can't punch. Yeah. That there is, that there is proprietary to the Furies. That there is a proprietary attribute. Being able to be knocked spark out by a, a cruiserweight who can't punch is proprietary. That's not that's not the normal chin. The normal chin at heavyweight, that's pretty standard. Being hit by a cruiserweight who can't punch, it's pretty standard. Like AJ. AJ, guess what? When AJ got put down, he weren't hit by a cruiserweight who can't punch. He was hit by Vladimir Klitschko, Dr. Steelhammer. And when you watch the actual punch here, yeah, that was a fully leveraged, that was probably one of the best and cleanest right hands I've ever seen. And if you did if you, if you disagree, you might you man show me something better. You think I'm shilling. The truth is, AJ was caught with one of the best right hands in history. And it bounced off and he smiled. His eyes weren't rolling, his he weren't laid flat out, his legs weren't limp, his arms weren't limp, his neck weren't clenched, his abdominals weren't clenched, he wasn't busting all over himself. He just sat there, smiled and got back up. That there is what you call cast iron chin. So right, that's, and that's why we can't do this kind of analysis because AJ can't sit there and tell you how he can be winning 12 rounds and then oh, bang because he just don't know he, he doesn't know what that is. AJ's never experienced being hit once and then just being done for. Fury has and that's why we have to learn from the Furies in this respect because never before have we seen a family with such flawed chin genetics but yet still keep pushing through. And we have to and I've always said this I have, we have to respect Fury for that. Because for him to have got as far as he has, with such limited, wafer-thin chin genetics, it's truly, it's truly, truly marvellous. I've, I've never seen anything like it. However, to end, in ending, I will say that I think a lot of... That's, this is a lot, lot of the reason that Fury doesn't want to fight AJ, I believe. And this is a lot of the reason that Fury likes to fight people he's safe with, i.e. cruiserweights. You think it's a coincidence? Steve Cunningham and... Fury Wilder, those are some of his best wins. Do you think it's do you think it's a coincidence what Fury loves outweighing people 50, 60, 70 pounds? I don't. This is what Fury likes to do. He likes to go in there knowing he's fighting someone two weight divisions smaller than himself. Because that's the only way, to be fair to him, he can balance the chin part, if that makes sense. Because we know when people go up weights, that's how you, you get better punch resistance. So Fury can't fight someone his own size, AJ. He has to fight someone two sizes smaller than him so that his chin can balance out. Otherwise, he's essentially gone in there. Well, we saw what happened. We saw what happened when John Fury went in there with a man his his own size. It's not it's not a fair fight. Fury has to fight people two, three weight divisions smaller. Otherwise, he ends up like the Black Skeletor looking ass, or some next light skinned on with his pops. Because that next lighty, the lighty put John Fury all the way out. That was even worse than the Black Skeletor. In fact, that reminds me, I've still got to cover that one. The YB has got another exclusive video coming. You man have only seen the Black Skeleton looking ass. You ain't seen you ain't seen Team Lighty. Yeah? You ain't seen Team YB's Lighty Don. Lighty Don poof, Lighty Don put John Fury all the way out. Yeah? John Fury don't want no smoke with the Lighties. Us man ain't playing, not even a bit. You best believe. Yeah? Team Lighty turned up. And turned off. How about that? Turned John all the way off. And that's why I feel Tyson Fury, in a way, is kind of like avenging his pops. If that makes sense. It's kind of whatever Fury does now, he's always or whatever Tyson does now, he's always trying to kind of get that get back for his pops. Like Dad, I'm gonna prove I'm gonna prove that we're not chinless, kind of thing. But that, with that said, though, when you look at his resume. There's a reason Fury don't want to fight no throwback dons. He don't want to fight the AJs. 
because he knows what happens. When you, when you get in there with that calibre, and I do believe the reason Tyson Fury has been so successful, really, is mu much to do with the, the calibre of fighter in this day and age. If Fury, if Tyson was back in the nineties, where people was playing for keeps, he w he would be done like his pops. But because it is two thousand twenty one fruity business, where people don't really come in to commit, and they're out of shape and they're soft and whatnot, it's it's easy to kind of look good. And that's why I mean, not being funny, look at Wilder. Do you think Wilder would be in the top twenty in nineteen ninety? I don't. I don't even think Tyson Fury would be top twenty. To be fair, I think these dons would just get chewed up. They'd get bullied, in, in my opinion. It's just, it was just, in my opinion, it was just too rough in the 90s and 80s. People was too hungry. It was too gritty back then. And we all saw what happened when Tyson Fury got in there with John McDermott. John McDermott, to an extent, was a bit of a throwback fighter in that sense. But he wasn't the original 90s kind of thing. But that, that, that there was just a, a signal of what would happen. John McDermott was that kind of that middle age between new age and old school and we saw what happened there Tyson Fury got bust and that's what I'm saying back in the 90s his career would have been wouldn't have it wouldn't have got started if that makes sense Fury was allowed to blossom because he wasn't getting touched and that's why you don't want AJ because you best believe he'll be getting a throwback whooping and that chin if AJ chooses chooses to stick it on Fury it's game over yeah, because throwback fighter with wafer chin, it only ends one way. And Fury knows that. That's why Fury don't want to fight. He thinks it's a coincidence. Fury is basically admitting here, you know, I, I, even if I beat AJ for 12 rounds, whoop, bang, it's game over. Because you best believe this ain't going to be no whoop cruiserweight this time. It'll be whoop, full-fledged, gold, Hall of Fame don. Yeah, Fury's chin can't take that. He can't take whoop, Hall of Fame. He can take whoop, Cruiserweight who can't punch though, no doubt. 